Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Cincinnati Reds Rebuild. Here on MLB The Show 22, that is right. And today's episode is going to be a big one. I hope you've got your popcorn. I hope you got a comfortable seat because this is going to be the biggest episode of the entire series to date. We are going to be taking a look not only at the 2023 MLB Draft, but we are also going to be doing a little bit of a prospect showcase with all of our young players in both the AAA system and the AA system. So we will be playing a game with AAA Louisville and AA Chattanooga. So I hope you guys are ready because... I'm excited. I know that I that I, a few of you are at least excited. <laughs> Let's get straight into things. We are one day away from the MLB amateur draft. If I simulate through this game against the Cardinals, hopefully we win. We do. TJ Friedel is out for about one to two weeks, but here it is. Today is the 2023 first year player draft. What would you like to do? I would like to go to the draft. We have the sixth pick in the draft. I've taken a look at a few players. We are going to get a blue chipper, but the best player available is probably going to go number one to the A's. And he goes three to the Royals. It's this guy right here, Robbie Martins. He was ready in 2024. He's got 80 potential, 70 overall. He is certainly the best player in this in this class. But the number one overall pick was Pablo Barrero. Or Bur Burrow. Bur 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 I don't know how to pronounce your name. I apologize. So, oh, and Eddie Freehand goes. Uh, I was actually looking at this guy as maybe like a sneaky pick that I would take in my blue chip spot if Robbie Martins went. And unfortunately, both of them have gone. So we go and we are going to take... We are going to take a, a, a blue chip prospect. Here's what's left. Now, I have been looking, and I think that David Wong is the best blue chipper available because I was comparing him with Javier Batista. Now, the unfortunate thing is that David Wong is two years older than Javier Batista, but if you take a look at the power stats and the contact stats, 55 and 60 on contact for Batista, 60 and 60 for contact on Wong, 55 and 65 for Wong on power, and 50 and 50 for power on on Batista. So Wong already has the edge on both the hitting stats. Then he has 60-60 on discipline and vision. And then Wong or uh, Batista has 50-50. And then if we go to the defensive stats, yes, Batista has a little bit more speed than Wong does. But I think that overall, Wong, uh, David Wong from South Korea, 80, 80 potential, 55 overall, he is going to be a stud in the near future. Well, in the far future because he's ready in 2027 plus unfortunately this class wasn't really good for right now guys at least in the blue chip spots so unfortunately david wong is going to be the guy that we not unfortunately that he's going to be the guy that we take but unfortunately he is the going to be the guy that is going to take a long time but everybody here is going to take it to at least 2026 if not 2027 plus to be ready so that is kind of sucky i was looking at this guy rob galindo now he's not a blue chip guy but he does have really, really good stats, and he's a 70-70, so, and he's ready in 2024. Unfortunately, I don't think he's going to make it to our next draft spot, because that would be somebody that I really want to take. But last year, we didn't get a chance to take a blue chip guy because uh, we were had such a, a low spot on the draft class, or on the, in the, the spot, because we, we did so good in the previous real life year. So we didn't get a chance to take a blue chipper. This year, I really want to take a blue chip prospect. It's David Wong. Welcome to the team. David Wong is here. And we can make sure... Oh, we have a competitive balance pick. Is that starting pitcher going to be here? He's not. I think he got taken. What did he get taken as? Did he get taken right after me? There goes Javier Batista. Starting pitcher. There's Galinda. Okay, so Rob Galinda goes 13 to the Red Sox. All right. That makes sense. He was a really solid player. Really solid player. So now we have to think about what we want to do. Because now we're just going on, like, just raw potential. Because I don't think that there's another 80 overall potential guy that we have scouted here that is going to be of value. 
There are a few guys that are a little bit high on the in the yellow. But is it worth it to take it? I mean, unfortunately, all these guys are 2027 20, plus, which just actually it just kind of sucks. There is this guy, Chester Patterson, who has the potential to be ready in uh, 2024. And he looks like he's got about the same kind of stats as Rob Galinda, although his accuracy is not as high as what Galinda was. But Chester Patterson might be the move at 70-70. Although this guy down here, Jeffrey Martinez, he's from California. He's got really good contact, really good reaction time. He's a good defender, got good stealing. He's got good vision. All right, Jeffrey Martinez might be the guy that we take in uh, the second round. Billy Gonzalez, his scouting's not like super high up or super consistent, so we will uh, move on from him. I think I'm going to take Chester Patterson, but then we'll go and look for Jeffrey Martinez in the second round. He should be here because I don't think he got taken. So if we, uh, if we scout to 2027, let's see... We go to 2024. There's Jeffrey Martinez. I think we take Jeffrey Martinez with this next pick in the second round. So we've gotten three pretty solid potential guys. Now, are they going to be that same potential uh, when we get there because their accuracy wasn't as high? I don't know. And now we've got Tom Malone, who's got 80 potential, 65 overall, ready in 2025. He looks like he has decent stuff. But again, his accuracy is about halfway, a little under halfway maybe. So that kind of concerns me a little bit. I don't really know where to go with this. Teddy Johnson. I don't really want to get a closing pitcher. Abraham Esposito. He's got really good power against lefties. He's 75-75, but again, his accuracy is pretty low. I think if we could take a flyer on him a little bit later in the draft, because he seems to be pretty low on the board. So maybe next round we take him. Rodney Raditz. He's got really good contact, really decent reaction times. Not great speed. He's a little over halfway, so those those stats would change. But at 75-70, I don't think that'd be a bad. I don't think that'd be a bad pickup. I really don't think that'd be a bad pickup. And then we come back and we take Abraham Esposito. But I, I just don't think that Abraham Esposito's stats are going to be this. I, I really don't, especially because he's under halfway uh, scouted on accuracy. Let's take Rodney Raditz. With this pick in the third round. I just don't think that Esposito... Oh, was that Esposito? Did he go? I don't think he did. I just don't think that his stats are going to be what they say they are. Because of his his lower accuracy. Esposito is gone, actually. Is he really gone? Oh, no, he is. Here he is. Abraham Esposito. Let's take him just as a little bit of a flyer pick. Who knows if he's actually going to be that good. I don't know. And then we'll go with just an absolute solid prediction, like an 80 prediction. And it could be this Abe Guerrero guy, but I don't really want to get a guy that has, that's a, an outfielder. I think we've already done that. We've drafted two left fielders, a second baseman, a shortstop, and a starting pitcher. I'd like to get another pitcher. Unfortunately, we don't have any relief pitchers that are left scouted. Who's the highest accuracy pitcher? We don't have any high accuracy pitchers left. So we're just going to take an absolute just guess and see who we have. There's a couple guys that are ready in 2024, and all those guys are 80 potential with 70s, 70 or 75. Honus Ramiro from the Dominican, he's already 23, which kind of throws me off a little bit. I do like his name, though. <laughs> uh, Michael Matsui, Jeffrey Strong, or Mark Polito. I like this dude's beard. He's from Puerto Rico, Japan. Dominican Republic, and uh, from Minnesota. So who's got the best stats out of everybody here? Honus Ramiro has really bad fielding stats, but again, that could change. It's not super accurate. Michael Matsui. Hmm. Ramiro might be the guy. Actually, Mark Polito might be the guy. He looks like he has solid stats all throughout. He has probably more solid stats than what Jeffrey Strong does. We're going to take a flyer on Mark Polito. He might not be good, but we are going to take a flyer on him. We should have one more pick in the draft. We do. And this one, I'm just going to probably take a guy that we at least know a, a decent amount about, like Aaron Franco. I guess we could take him and make him a bullpen guy. So let's just take Aaron Franco as a closing pitcher. We could turn him into a relief pitcher or even a starter, I guess. <laughs> the draft has come to an end. 
let's go see what we did with our guys. So right off the bat, David Wong, we already knew he was going to have A potential because he was a blue chip prospect. So blue chip prospects are guaranteed to have A potential. But look at this. That's not that's not like horrible. These potentials are, are not great, obviously. Mark Polito ends up having 83. We didn't know anything about this guy, and he ends up having the B potential. That's pretty good. And Aaron Franco has C potential, but it's 76. These guys could develop. The oldest guy that we drafted was 22-year-old Abraham Esposito, and he was from college. So I don't think that we did a bad job. Obviously, we didn't do an amazing job drafting. We could have done better with the scouting to figure out who we who we wanted and stuff, but who was good. But I think that given what we had, we did a pretty good job here. And I'm very excited about Abraham Esposito because it, it looked like it wasn't super off on his power versus lefties. He already got 73 power versus lefties, so he could be a stud. And David Wong, we are going to sign up to a contract, obviously, because he's going to be our future guy, but he won't be ready for a while. He's got really good durability, decent speed. He's going to take a while to get to the big league club. Chester Patterson will sign up. He's got already good stamina, but he needs some, some work in double A. Jeffrey Martinez, he looks good contact-wise, and he also looks good fielding defensively. He doesn't have any power. A second baseman with no power, which is a little scary, but whatever. Rodney Raditz has basically nothing good about him. <laughs> Abraham Esposito, we know, has the power on the lefty side. Mark Polito. He might actually end up being better than David or than Chester Patterson. Who knows? I mean, he has a better over or a better uh, potential than he does. And then we'll sign up Aaron Franco, who we're probably going to move to the bullpen when he gets here next year. So that's all of our draft picks signed. But I do want to see it was the Red Sox and the A's. Those were the teams that drafted guys that I was really interested in. So Rob Galindo ends up having C potential, 73 overall with 75 potential. So that's not as good as I thought it was. I mean, we didn't miss out too much with Chester Patterson. And then the A's took, uh, actually the Tigers took Freddie, uh, Eddie Freehand, which sucks because I really wanted Eddie Freehand. He ends up being 92 potential. But the A's took the number one guy that I wanted, which was, uh, did the A's take? No, it was the Royals. The Royals took the guy that I wanted. Where's the Royals at? The Royals took Robbie Martins. He ends up being a 91 overall, uh, or at least 91 potential. That sucks. I really wanted Robbie Martins. We didn't miss out too much. Our first overall pick, David Wong, was right around there. Who's the highest potential guy? Paolo, uh, Pablo Barrero ends up being a 94 potential. He was the number one overall pick to the A's. And then 92 for Chris Rainey. There's 91 for Wong. 91 for Clint Taylor. 90 for Sean Chavis. Juan Rosario gets 94 potential. 96 potential for Fred Gatlin. Okay. Fred Gatlin could be a stud. Brad Lloyd gets 94 potential. And then we're back to those guys. So who's kind of stole a player? Ooh, Sean Rolls has a potential. And they drafted him probably in the, the fourth round. Maybe a competitive balance pick. I don't know. But he has 90 potential. Pretty late into the, the draft. We could have probably drafted him. I didn't even think about him. Then they have 80 potential on Roberto Esposino. He got taken most likely in the third round. 87 potential on Richard Fletcher. So we missed out on a few guys that had really good potential. But overall wise, I don't think this entire draft class was that great. Anthony Navarra or Navar for the Guardians. 88 potential for him. Sean Rolls we saw had 90 potential. I don't, given what the draft class was, I don't think that we missed out too much. I think we did good. We did fine with what we had. And uh, overall wise, I think it was good. I think it was fine. So now we're going to pick a game to play against the, uh, or for the, the AAA squad, Louisville Bats. And we might play against the Columbus Clippers because those are my uh, hometown team. I'm from Ohio and the Columbus Clippers are the team. So we might have to play them. They are, the, of, of course, the, uh, the minor league affiliate of the Cleveland Guardians. And Justin Dunn, Cleveland Robles, Levi Stout is pitching, and then Josh Winder. So let's take a look at this pitching rotation for the Louisville Bats and see who we want to go with. So Justin Dunn is pitching pretty good, I guess. Cleveland Robles is uh, doing decent. Levi Stout's probably pitching the best out of everybody. Not ERA-wise, but 
wins loss wise josh winder graham ashcraft hey graham ashcraft is pitching amazing down here in in triple a good for him he's not getting called back up right now to the big league club but at least he's doing okay here we might have to go with levi stout levi stout is um a guy that we traded for from the mariners in the the big deal that we made with with luis castillo so he came over from there we might have to go with him on the mound justin dunn i mean we've seen justin dunn pitch in the spring and he pitched very well i was very impressed with him but we've already seen him and we haven't seen levi stout yet so i think we'll pick a game that has levi stout on the mound as terms of, or in terms of guys hitting the baseball this is what our lineup is going to look like we have jay allen in center field cam collier in third base vladimir herrera one of our first round picks or one of our draft picks uh from last season is hitting at first base aristides aquino the punisher will hit fourth in left field austin hendrick will hit right or be in right field hit five jose torres will be in shortstop edwin arroyo the dh matt mcclain is second base and matthew nelson is the catcher on the bench we have leonardo jimenez tyler callahan henry trevino michael Sayani, and that is the bull or that is the bench so we don't really have a power hitter down here i mean aristides aquino has seven he should have probably more than that because he's Aristides Aquino. And then on the double-A squad, we'll figure all that when we get there. And we already know what the big league club looks like with Noel V. Marte. So let's go find a game. Let's go find a game that has Levi Stout. So it's the third game against the Guardians. Let's simulate this one. We win. We win, we win, we win. The Mariners have offered me a trade. Evan White. Okay, Evan White who is a 26-year-old B potential first baseman, 76 overall, and they want Justin Boyd and Victor Acosta. 19-year-old, 66 overall, Victor Acosta, and shorts, or, and then left fielder Justin Boyd. For, I don't think this is a fair trade. They're getting too much value for that. So we split so far against the Guardians. How'd the Reds do? The Reds lost the first game against the Dodgers and then won the second game with adrian hauser so that's good adrian hauser might end up being one of the best trades that we made and that wasn't even supposed to happen so now we're going up against gavin williams who is one in five on the year against levi stout uh let's play the game against the cleveland guardians we are going to play the full game louisville bats versus cleveland guardians quick counts will be on levi stout will take the mound I'm not going to switch anybody out because I do want to see those guys. Although Henry Trevino, you might want to see. No, I want to see Edwin, or I want to see Cam Collier, and I want to see Austin Hendrick, and I want to see all these guys. Actually, I don't have to see it. Henry, uh, Austin Hendrick. We could put Justin or Michael Siani at right field for this game. That could be pretty fun. We don't have another catcher. Matthew Nelson is tired, but we don't have another. I don't think we have another. Can anybody else play catcher? I don't think anybody else on this team can play catcher. No, it doesn't look like it. No, so Matthew Nelson's going to have to stick it out and play it. But I think I'm going to put Siani at uh, right field instead of Hendrick, and we'll see how that does. But that's going to be the lineup. Let's get into the game. Louisville Bats versus Columbus Clippers, the first of two minor league showcase games. And welcome in, everybody. Glad you're with us. AAA action coming at you on the show. It's the Columbus Clippers taking on the Louisville Bats. First pitch coming your way next. All right, just about set to go. Our starting pitcher in this one, Levi Stout. But Chris, he hasn't exactly been stellar here on his home mound. Well, I'll say this. Every player wants to perform well at their home ballpark in front of their fans. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is a 1-1 count to Rick Chapman to lead off the game for the Clippers. And now it is a 1-2 to the leadoff man who could be up in the big league club whenever, but he gets struck out by Levi Stout. What a way to start the game. It is a 1-1 count to Yordis Valdez. And he will foul that one off. So similar start to how Chapman had it. And we'll go circle change. It's very interesting to see the pitch repertoire that Levi Stout possesses. He has a Vulcan change. Not a lot of pitchers throw Vulcan change. It's a very unique pitch to have. But it gets it gets uh, Yordiz to strike out. And now we have Oscar Gonzalez. Can we go 
three for three. Nope, it'll go Matt McLean at second base. But we do get a quick one, two, three inning for the first inning of the game. And we're going up against Gavin Williams, who in 10 starts is one and five. Not very impressive. Jay Allen, he had some drama in the offseason where we weren't sure if we were going to be able to keep him around. I ended up making a trade that sent him away and then going right back for him. We told him, we whispered in his ear, we were like, hey, I'm coming back for you. Don't worry. You're not officially getting traded to this team. So we came back and we traded for him. He had a little bit of a controversial start to the second season, but he is here and he's here to stay because he is a very good prospect. So is Cam Collier, who is going to fly out to center field, unfortunately, on his first at bat, but he is a really, really good prospect, top 50 prospect, along with Jay Allen. Vladimir Herrera is tied for second on the, the bats with home runs, five of them. That's not very impressive, but he will get a nice two out single to start the day here. Thank you, Vladimir, for that. Good job, my guy. And now we get the Punisher. 310 average in AAA. Obviously, we knew what he did in the big league club last season, which was absolutely nothing. But I guess he can hit minor league pitching a lot better than he can hit major league pitching. <laughs> Good job, Aquino. Getting on base. And now Michael Ciani, I think is how you say I don't know how to say his name. Really, I've never known how to say his name. He's been in the, the farm system for a while, and I've never figured out how to say his name. But he is up here. We're number 36. Kind of gross, actually. <laughs> and he will smack that to right field right into the waiting hands or the waiting glove of the right fielder for the Clippers. And we will go down with runners in scoring position. Or at least one runner in scoring position on second base. Runners on the bases. And that's going to be Matt McClain fielding at second base. Another top 50 prospect in his own right. We got a lot of those. A lot of those in the farm system. And now we got Brian Rocchio, who at any day now could be in the big league club for the Guardians. But he will ground out to shortstop, and that's the second out in the uh, the top of the second. Will Benson takes the plate, hitting six for the Clippers. And he will smack that to right field. Siani's underneath it, and he will field it. And that is a quick second inning. First two innings, Levi Stouts looked really solid. Jose Torres, the shortstop, comes to the plate here now. 1-1 one, one count to him. And Gavin Williams will give him a nice pitch to hit. Not nice enough as it goes to the left fielder and caught. Edwin Arroyo now hitting DH for us. 270 on the year. Everybody's had a really solid average, it seems like, so far throughout this first half of the season for the, the bats which is really good. Nice to see everybody's contributing a little bit, but that one's going to be popped up. It's a can of corn for the third baseman. He's got it. And that is two outs in the bottom of the second. Matt McLean, 20 RBIs on the year so far, hitting in the eight hole. And that will be a called strike. First round pick in 2021 for the Cincinnati Reds. And that is going to be not gone. I didn't go. Thank you, first base ump. I certainly I did not go. It is a 2-2 count now to McLean. And McLean will get a nice rip on the ball. That's going to go to left field. And he's going to have a two-out double. Extra bases for Matt McLean. Thank you, big beefy. And now we've got the tired catcher, Matthew Nelson. He's running on fumes here. Can he get a runner home? Ooh, good slider, but it is just called a ball. I really want Matthew Nelson to get a hit here. 3-1 now after the fastball. Jay Allen is on deck, ready to go. If we do get a walk, are they going to walk the catcher? No, they won't. But Matthew Nelson was swinging for the fences. I don't know if that had the distance to get out. If it was fair, it might have hit the wall. Because th those walls in left field and right field are pretty high up. But that one is going to left center. The center fielder is giving chase. And he's got it. So unfortunately, we leave another runner stranded on the pond. And we will move forward. But Levi Stout has been pitching phenomenal in the first two innings. 
I can see why he's one of our better pitchers down here in AAA. Is he making a case to be called up to the big league squad? Probably not yet. He is still pretty low overall. I think he's only a 69. Nice. But he still is a pretty low overall. And we have a couple guys over there that are like in the mid to high 70s. So I don't think that it's fair to them to just absolutely call up a guy that's not as high of overall. That's an unfortunate called third ball. We'll go with a curve ball here. This could be very risky. And it certainly was. It certainly was a very risky idea, but luckily he just fouled it off. Pilecki would have smacked that. And that's going to be the first mistake of the ball game for Levi Stout. A, a changeup that went a little too high, and it's going to be a foul ball. And that might be us getting paid for it. Aquino does make a play at the wall. Thankfully, these walls, like I mentioned earlier, are super high up in the air. If that was a lower wall, that would have been out. Rick Chapman, he will ground that to second base. McLean makes the play, an easy just dump off to Torres at shortstop, or at second base, I should say, and uh, we get out of the inning. So luckily that walk doesn't come back to bite us. It almost did. It almost did. Luckily, Aquino made the play there. And now we go to the bottom of the third. Jay Allen is at the plate, and he misses on that one for a 1-2 count now. We've been able to get a couple hits on Gavin Williams, but not really anything to make him sweat as the third baseman is able to field that for the first out. Cam Collier comes to the plate 0 for 1 on the day, trying to make it 1 for 2, but luckily for the Clippers... Gavin Williams is just that guy. Fields that ball and gets him out quickly. Vladimir Herrera got our first hit of the night. Can he get our second hit of the night? Well, it's not our second hit, but it's his second hit, and he will. Same situation, same hit that he did. It's a two-out single to right field, and it made the first baseman dive like he did on the first attempt. And Aristides Aquino also got a hit on his first at-bat. Can he do it again? I would like to hit a home run with Aristides Aquino. I didn't do it in the big leagues. I really would like to do it in AAA. But Gavin Williams has got to give me a pitch that I can smack, and that was it, but I was really early on it. And he strikes me out. That was the pitch that I could have sent to the moon. Unfortunately, it got sent to the catcher's mitt because I missed it. Valdez, did he strike out? I think he struck out last at bat. And he's about to strike out again. The Vulcan change, he just he does does get a tip of it. Tip. One two count. Here comes the slider, and he makes me pay. Bad placement of the slider, Levi Stout, and uh, Valdez. Oh no, Allen takes a bad angle to the the ball, and that allows Valdez to get a triple out of it. Well, that's unfortunate. I didn't think that Allen was gonna take that bad of a, an angle. And that's going to be hit to right field, but that's going to be enough speed or enough distance to get him home. Siani does not have the arm at all to get that home, especially not on 87 speed. And the Clippers will get on the board first. A bad angle to the ball in center field, right center field, with Jay Allen. Sets up the triple. And then they just, all they need is a pop fly, and it goes to an RBI. I don't know if that's really on Levi Stout at that point. Maybe it is. Who knows? But there's two outs. Brian Rocchio is up. He's 1-1 one, one count. He sends that to right field. Sayani's underneath it, and that'll be out of the inning. But they do get one run, unfortunately. Kind of a bogus run, but they do get it. It counts. And now Sayani will come to the plate, and he will get a good rip on that fastball, and it's going to bounce off the wall. He's got enough speed to be able to make that into a double, and he will, and that is a leadoff double for Michael Sayani. And he's hyped about it, too. And now Jose Torres, nobody out. 1-1 one, one count, runner on second. It's looking mighty tasty for a run scored. I'm going to send him home. Does Michael Sayani have the speed? He certainly does. And a little blooper to, to short left field, shallow left field by Jose Torres scores us a run, and we tie the game just like that. Good job. That's just good all-around hitting by the boys. And it helps when you got some speed on, on the base path with uh, Siani having 89 speed. Edwin Arroyo, also part of that Mariners trade. He will strike out, though, with the changeup low. Good recovery pitch by Matt McClain. Or by Gavin Williams, not Matt McClain. 
Matt McLean is the man for us that is up to the plate. And that's going to be popped into shallow right center. Maybe not so much shallow. But that is a runner on second and first with one out and Matthew Nelson to the plate. He didn't really get enough on that fastball last at bat, the fourth fastball. No, I didn't swing. I did I did swing, I guess. I swung. They called it. I was way too early on that one. I didn't really want to. It looked like the slider was going to be in the zone, but then it just slid outside like it normally does. And that was a beautiful pitch, striking out Matthew Nelson. Jay Allen will make his third appearance. He's got runners on second and first. If just one in the outfield should be enough to get the uh, go-ahead run. Unfortunately for Jay Allen and for the bats, it's to left center and it's an out. But we do tie the game. Jose Torres with a little blooper. We go top five, one one or one one count. Yeah, I was gonna say one one count. One one count to Will Benson, Matt McLean. Shallow center field, got it. One quick out, Oscar Mercado, who I do like. I really do think that Oscar Mercado has some good potential as he strikes out there by Levi Stout's fastball. Cle Kevin Plowecki. I think he was. Wasn't he on the Mets for a little bit? I feel like he was on the Mets for a little bit. That's going to be a grounder to second base. McLean will field it. A little bit of a, th a throw in the dirt. But luckily, uh, Vladimir Herrera has no problem with it. And now we go bottom five. Cam Collier is up the two hitter. And that is a very generous ball four call. Thank you for that. Now, Vladimir Herrera, who is two for two on the night with two singles. Can he make it three for three? He can! Vladimir Herrera shoots that into left field past the shortstop. And that is going to be runners on first and second. Nobody out. With Aristides Aquino taking the play for the third time. The Punisher is raring and ready to go. And he's going to make them pay. No, he's not. It's going to be to left field. First out. <laughs> oh, Aquino, why do you suck so much? Michael Sayani. Scored us our first run of the night. Can he get on base again? No, he can't because that was a horrible check swing that I did not even want to do. I was so early on it. And that is going to be, unfortunately, the second out of the inning because of it's a strikeout. Even though I didn't want to do it. But that's going to fall to center field. I think I got enough speed to tie this or to break this game open. And he does. 55 speed is good enough. And Jose Torres has both the RBIs. He's got runners in scoring position on his mind every single time he's at the plate. He wants he wants RBIs. That's what he wants. And he's got two of them today as we take the lead. Edwin Arroyo fouls that slider off. It's a 1-2 count to him. Can he get the third baseman home? Or the runner on third home. He will. And we will take a 2-1 to one lead. A 3-1 to one lead. I should say. I was going to say a two-run lead, but I combined them. He will take a 3-1 to one lead thanks to Edwin Arroyo. And they might start have to start thinking about pulling Gavin Williams. This is getting a little bit out of hand for the Clippers. Although he just pumps a fastball right by Matt McClain. High and inside. And it's a 1-2 count to the young second baseman. And he will strike out swinging, but they will do the honors of throwing it to first base. We do get two runs across home plate to make it a three to one game, which is good. So that means Levi Stout's now in position to win the game, which is something that I'm happy about. I wouldn't imagine Gavin Williams comes back out for the seventh inning or for the bottom of the sixth. I mean, not the, not the seventh inning for the, I don't think he's going to be out for the seventh inning, no doubt, but for the bottom of the sixth, I don't think he's going to come back out. I wouldn't put him back out. Foul ball. That's going to be fouled to left, and we'll go Vulcan chain to try and strike out Abraham Gutierrez. And he will hit it to second base. Matt McLean fields it. He's got a lot of work today. A lot of balls hit to second base, and McLean will do his job. Rick Chapman 0 for 2 on the night. 1-2 count to him, and he will pop that to shallow left center. Jay Allen's giving chase. Jay Allen's got it. That was a tough one to go get. 
Luckily, J. Allen's got the speed. That's why we kept him. That's why we kept him. Because he's got the speed that makes a difference. Speed kills, baby. Speed kills. Yordis Valdez. One, two, count to him. He will just make contact with the Vulcan. Not sure how he did, but he did. And it's still a one, two, count to him. Two outs. Doesn't chase the curveball, really. Okay. I thought I'd get him on that one. But he does hit the changeup. Sayani's underneath it in right field, and it's going to be the third out of the inning. Great pitching from Levi Stout right now. And I was right. Gavin Williams will not see the sixth as uh, Tommy Mace comes to the, the mound to take over in relief of Williams. Down by two, and that's going to be called strike on Matthew Nelson there. Not sure how that was called a strike, but whatever. One, two count from Tommy Mace. Nelson will field that uh, foul that slider off. He's got a two-seamer. Okay, we got to be on the lookout for the two-seamer. That's going to be a really moving slider. I was not ready for that. A slider that was up in the zone and was moving like crazy. I did make contact with it, and Jay Allen has just been struggling today. He hasn't been able to get anything going, at least in terms of hitting. He's been very good defensively. Except for the 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 play that led to the first run of the game for the Clippers, where he took a bad angle. Other than that, he's been very good defensively. And he just hasn't been able to get the bat going. Has not been able to get the bat off his shoulders. That one will bloop into right field, and it'll be a base hit the first of the game for Jay Allen. So at least he's gotten off the snide there. But he only has 48 speed, which does kind of affect the ability for him to steal. We're not going to steal with him. We're going to let that ball go get called for a ball. And it's a 2-2 count to Cam Collier. Somebody who I want to be the probably the future at third base for the big leagues. I should have swung at that. I was thinking about it. I should have swung at it. It gets called a strike anyway. And Vladimir Herrera is becoming one of the favorite guys on this team. Three for three. They're going to throw back on Jay Allen. He's not going to steal because he only has 48 speed. But it is a 3-1 count to Herrera. So there is the possibility of a walk here. Is he the future at, at first base? Is he the next Joey Votto? He's got the green light, and it's a paying off because he smacks that into right field. I'm going to send him to second base. He should be able to make it, and he does. So with two outs in the inning, Vladimir Herrera pushes the runner to third, and he gets on second himself. So a big-time two-out double. 3-2 three, two count to... Aquino. Vladimir Herrera's just got a sweet swing. I don't know what it is about him, but he's going to be four for four on the day. He's just got such a nice swing to him. I'm going to let Levi Stout go into the seventh. I might even let him go into the eighth if he has a good performance here. We'll go Vulcan change on the one-two to Oscar Gonzalez. He will smack that ball. If it's fair, it's gone. It was certainly not fair. Nowhere near fair. But we'll go slider. Doesn't chase it. A little bit of a, of a bad slider there. Poor placement of that. But the changeup smacked to center field. Jay Allen's underneath it. He's got it. First out of the game. Or first out of the inning, not the game. <laughs> Alex Call. 0 for 2. 1-1 one, one count to him. And he will hit that to right field. Sayani's underneath it. And Sayani's got it. So two quick outs in the seventh. Yeah, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have somebody in the bullpen just in case. But I think I'm going to let Levi go into the eighth. He's been pitching phenomenally here. And Brian Rocchio on a 2-2 count with two outs sends that to left center. But Jay Allen is too fast, too furious, and he's got it. That is three up and three down. I'm going to get somebody warming up in the bullpen just in case. I think we'll go with... Let's go with... Uh, let's go with River. River San Martin, former Red Big Leaguer. Now in the AAA squad. We'll go with him to maybe close out the game if we need to. Sayani on a 2-2 count to lead off the bottom of the seventh. Oh, beautiful pitch from Tommy Mace. And Sayani will give chase to it. That's going to fall in front of the center fielder. And Sayani's got a single. A beautifully placed leadoff single for Michael Sayani. 
and he's got a little bit more stealing ability than Jay Allen does. It's still not amazing. I am going to send him, though. Oh, nope, I'm not going to send him. I guess I won't send the big boy. Tommy Mace a little hesitant that somebody's going to steal on him. And Jose Torres will go chasing for that fastball up in the zone. He won't get it. Blown right by him. 1-2 count. Jose Torres has both of the RBIs. Well, not both of the RBIs. He has two of the three RBIs. And that's a horribly placed first uh, or a horribly placed ball that I just completely shouldn't have swung at. That was embarrassing. <laughs> and Jose Torres will go down for, uh, swinging on the first out of the inning. Edwin Arroyo. He has the other RBI. And that is going to be a double play to end the inning. Beautiful defensive masterpiece by the first baseman there. Wow. That was a work of art to get that double play. I am impressed. I am thoroughly impressed by that first baseman's play there. The Vulcan change will strike out one more guy. And Levi Stout, man, he is phenomenal tonight. I have been very impressed with him. Oscar Mercado, uh, Mercado will send that into center field. He will get on base with a one-out single. Kevin Ploiecki. He will smack that to right center field. And unfortunately, I think Levi Stout's day is done. I think we, we uh, pushed him to his limits here. He will get the runner in, and it's a 3-2 game. Uh, I didn't want to pull Levi out. But he's just, he's getting too tired. We'll bring in River to try and, and finish this uh, finish this inning out. And then we'll bring in Christian Roa. We'll warm him up. We'll also have uh, we'll also have Hernandez warming up too, just in case. But let's see what River's got up his sleeve. One, two count, three, two on him. That's going to be left or right center. Michael Sayani underneath it. They are going to move the runner on 22 speed. I'm not going to be able to get him out. He will make it to third, but there's two outs in the inning. The tying run is on third, and Rick Chapman to the plate, who is 0 for 3. And he will field that, or ground that to Cam Collier at third base, and we get out of the inning. Thank you, River. Thank you, River San Martin, for surviving the inning and allowing Levi Stout to still be eligible for the win. And a 3-2 count to lead off Matt McClain. And Matt McClain will send that to center. It will not get down. It'll be caught. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Matthew Nelson now hitting in the nine hole. And Matthew Nelson will get that ball to deep left field in the corner, and he's got a double. A one out double for Matthew Nelson. I know he's gassed, but he's still got it. That's his seventh double of the day. And maybe Jay Allen can get on the board again here. Can you extend our lead? Get it back to a two-run lead. He will get walked. Tommy Mace walks him. I'm very surprised that they've kept Tommy Mace in this game this long. He's been in since sixth inning, I think. Or maybe the seventh. I think it was the sixth. He has been going hard this entire game so far. I don't think I'm going to have anybody go. I don't think that Matthew Nelson would have made it anyway. So with two outs, Vladimir Herrera, who is four for four on the day, he has just been unstoppable. And he will be five for five? No, he will not be five for five. Four for five for Vladimir Herrera, which is still fantastic. He's just got such a sweet swing. Christian Roa will come in to seal this game, close it out, shut the door on the Columbus Clippers, and that's not a good way to start. Jay Allen fumbles it. Is he going to go to second? He will not. He kept that ball in front of him. Good job. But that's a leadoff single and not a good start here. I'm a little bit scared now. That's a ball. We'll go change up. That's also a ball. Come on, Roa. I know you got some placement issues, but figure it out. There's a strike. Can we get a double play opportunity here? That would have been dangerous if that was fair. Very dangerous. We'll go slider. This could be a mistake. Really should have been a mistake, but he just fouled it off. 
There's the fastball. Come on, stop hitting them foul. Hit them double play opportunities. That's what I'm going for here. Oh, Herrera couldn't do what the first baseman did for the Clippers, but he will end up fielding the, the ball and getting the second baseman out or getting the runner going to second out. And that's the first out of the inning. And now we've got a chance to end the game with a double play. McLean to Her Torres to Herrera. And the Louisville Bats will win this game 3-2 to two on the road. Actually, we were at home. I, I was going to say on the road, but we were at home. Thank you, boys. Man, Levi Stout pitched so well in this game. It's actually insane how well he pitched. He gets the player of the game and the win. It really should have been uh, Vladimir Herrera who gets the player of the game. With four for five with a double. He pitched amazing. And now we go into the double A portion of the episode. Double A portion of the episode. I hope you guys are excited for that. We got to pick a double A team or double A pitcher to go with. We've got Bryce Hubbard, Bernardo Flores, Brandon Bailey, Mark, Mark Sorroller, I think is how you say that, and Luis Castilla. Ooh, I might want to go with Luis Castilla because he was one of our draft picks. But also, I do like what Brandon Bailey's doing out here. He's 28 years old. He's pitching amazing right now. But I am curious about Luis Castilla. I kind of want to see him. And then the AA organization, Justin Boyd, Ronnie Dawson, Ray Valencia, our first overall pick, our first round pick at least. Michael Triani, Reese Hines, Isaiah Gillum, Cutter Coffey, Tanner Scoble, and Jose Barreo. I think what I'm going to do with this one is... I think I'm going to do a player lock for the double A team. I think. I don't really know. No, I think I'll do quick manage. I'll do quick manage on the game. That might be a little bit better. Let's do quick manage. Luis Castilla ends up playing this game, so we will we will play this game. And we will go play game and quick manage. We're on the road. We'll have uh, quick counts on just in case we need to jump in. And Luis Castillo will be on the mound. This is how the lineup will be. Victor Acosta will be on the bench because we got Tanner Scoble. I like the way this team looks. We're not playing very well in terms of record, but we'll see what we can do. Let's see. We're going up against Ronlan, or Ron, ugh, Ronald Bolanos. I was combining both of his names. Uh, Ron, Ronald Bolanos is at the, on the mound for... Uh, I don't remember what team this is, but let's see what we can do. Simulate the half inning, and we get no runs on. So now Luis Castilla allows a hit, but no runs. Going into the second, thank you. And we get three in the third. All right, Birmingham uh, on the the back end already. And Ronald, Bal Bal why can I not say this guy's name? It's so like confusing in my mind. Ronald Bolanos' en energy is already pretty pretty tiring and Luis Castillo is pitching amazing they do make a pitching change in the fifth and we don't get anything going there and Castillo's got shut out baseball here through five the boys are playing well still Luis Castillo pitching amazing and we get two more runs in and now we go to I'm gonna enter the game here and let's pitch a little bit with Luis Castillo because this could be pretty good all right here we go it's a rainy one 2-2 two, two count. Castilla still on the mound. And we're winning 5 to nothing. Johnny DeLuca is at the plate. I am going to warm up probably Jared Sullivan maybe. Dari oh, let's, let's warm up Moretta. Let's warm up Moretta. And we'll go slider away. Hopefully for the first strikeout. And he will hit that to Scoble or Schobel. Either one. And he will field it. Good job. Good job. Gouda job. 3-2 to Max George. Come on, Castilla. Produce. There it is. Barreo makes the play at short. Throw in on the run. He's got it. And that's two down in the bottom of the seventh. Brian Ramos is a 2-1 count to him. Or Ramos. Probably Ramos. Not many players, not many fans in the stands here for this double-A game in the rain. But that's at the hot corner. That's why they call that the hot corner. That is for sure. Tanner Scoble. To the plate, 2-2. We get to see a little bit of this team. Is that going to fall? I don't think it will. It will not. 
Center fielder makes the play on it. And that is the first out of the inning. We're going up against Shelby Miller, pitcher for Birmingham. Jose Barreo. I'm very excited about the potential of him being up in the big league club pretty soon. Uh, but he is going to struggle in the big league club if he can't get a base hit. He can. The shortstop could not make the play. And he will get a blooping single. Justin Boyd. The lookouts lead 5-0 here in the top of the eighth. That's going to go for a ball. 2-1 to Boyd. I'd like to say that he's a big power threat, but I'm not really sure if Justin Boyd's a big power threat or not. He will smack that to third base. It's going to be a double play opportunity. Unless he can beat it out. He was very close, but Justin Boyd unfortunately cannot beat it out. And I'm going to let Castilla go into the eighth. He has been playing really well, pitching amazing. Cutter Coffee cannot get that. One of the additions we made last season in the at the trade deadline, I think, or maybe this year the trade deadline. I don't even know. Actually, the trade deadline hasn't even come this year. But Cutter Coffee could not make the play. It is a one-two count now to Jordan Sprinkle. And he will somehow make contact with that slider. Not sure how, but he did. Castillo has a shutout brewing. Bottom eight. One, two to Sprinkle. He's got the strikeout. Beautiful. Beautifully placed pitched. And now we can go for a double play opportunity. That's going to be fouled off. It's Rowdy Reed. Ro Rowdy Reed? I don't even know. How do you say that? But he is going to ground a Barreo at short to Scoble. To first base. We got it. And that's out of the inning. And now we got Ronnie Dawson, the center fielder, who was cold headed into this game. He's one for two on the night. He probably got walked. Let's see if we can get a base hit. 2-2 two, two count to him, and he's going to pop that up. That is the definition of a can of corn for the third baseman. Ronnie Dawson sits down. And now we've got Ray Valencia, the catcher. One of our draft picks. Our first draft pick. And he's going to smack that right back up to center field. That could have done some damage to the starting or the, the relief pitcher, Shelby Miller, there. If that would have made contact with his gut. That was hit hard back up the middle. And now we got Michael Triana, the first baseman, the big, tall man. He's got a lot of power on those shoulders, but he's going to get underneath that fastball and get into a double play opportunity. So we go to the top of the ninth, or the bottom of the ninth, excuse me. We were already in the top of the ninth. We go bottom nine. Castilla has the chance for a shutout. I'm going to give him the opportunity. I shouldn't have given him the opportunity. <laughs> that ball, first pitch we throw the inning, well, with the quick count, it's not the first pitch, but our first pitch, that is a no-doubt home run, and Luis Castilla's day is done. Moretti will come in to finish the game because the shutout is no more, and Moretti will get him to fly out to Justin Boyd in left field for the first out. Unfortunately, I really wanted Luis Castilla to get that, that shutout. I really did. And, of course, the moment that I start talking about it, we let a, a no-doubt home run go, <laughs> of course. But Moretta has done a really good job of containing this inning and getting everybody out after, and Cutter Coffee will make the play to end the game, and we win 5-1. I've been very impressed with this little minor league showcase here. I was impressed with Barreo, Justin Boyd, even impressed with Moretta, and Luis Castillo, of all people, impressed me. So he was one of our draft picks, too. Very good day. For everybody, Reese Hines had uh, had a home run, three RBIs. Good for him. And I've been, I'm very impressed, very impressed with how this is. And we will simulate the June, the month of June here with the Cincinnati Reds. Josh Bell is back from injury, which is good. The Guardians have offered me Chase DeLouder. I'm not going to accept that. I think we can get if we are going to trade. If we are going to trade uh, Graham Ashcraft, I think we can do a little bit better than that. And a lot of injuries. Nick Lodolo tears his hamstring. He is done for a month. And they're trying to get Tucker Barnhart now. I don't want to give up Tucker Barnhart right now. 
There we go. Let's get a little bit. The Guardians still trying to offer me trades. Stop it, Cleveland. I don't want your guys. <laughs> I don't want your guys. It's the end of the double-A first half. Jay Allen dislocated ankle out for over six months. Jay Allen's season is done. That sucks. We're 34 and 50 heading into J uh, July. At least Josh Bell is back. But that sucks that we got Jay Allen injured for over six months now. And Lodolo's out still. And Spencer Steers, I forgot about Spencer Steele being injured with his torn MCL. Man, that sucks. That really, really does suck. Are we going to have an all-star? It doesn't look like we're going to have a starter, which is unfortunate. Araldis Chapman's going to make it as a closing pitcher. And Alexis Diaz is going to make it. Both of them are going to make it. That's awesome. We're not going to have Tyler Stevenson even make the all-star team this year. He was the starter last year. And it looks like no first baseman, no second baseman, no third baseman, no shortstop, no left fielder, no center fielders, and no right fielders. So we are going to have just Araldis Chapman and Alexis Diaz make it for the All-Star game. Which is, is all right, I guess. We are going to play probably... Next episode is going to be All-Star festivities, the trade deadline... Everything. It's going to be everything. And maybe even a, a little bit of a game or two in uh, in in the month of July. Like as a like quick man or jumping in, maybe in a quick situation. But the first big trade of the season, Cattell Marte gets traded from the Diamondbacks to the Mets for Brett Batty and Eric Ors. A couple younger guys. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. We have 35 and 51. If we go to our GM goals... If we go to our GM goals, last year we finished 71 and 91. We're 35 and 51 so far. 19 and a half games back of the Brewers. We're not going to catch them at all. But if we could just like get over 500, that would be awesome. But that is going to do it for this super long episode with the minor league showcase in the draft. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below in the comments who you think is going to become a star in our minor league system, who you think maybe needs a little bit more time. And uh, if you enjoyed the draft picks, if you liked the, if you liked the way that I drafted, or if you didn't like the way that I drafted, maybe you thought I should have taken somebody else. Let me know. I'm very curious to see what you guys had to say. But thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching. I really do appreciate it. Next episode is going to be another big one because we got all star stuff, we got the trade deadline, we got a bunch of stuff. So I hope you guys stick around for that as well. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I really do appreciate it, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.